Hi everyone, today we're going to have another look at cones, but this time looking at the volume of a cone. Right, how much ice cream can you fit in a cone? That's not one of the questions, but that is a volume problem, right? So, hopefully you're watching this having some understanding of cylinders. Now, what I've tried to do is make these cylinders the same height and the same width. You know, they look a bit different when one's in a bolder line, but they are the same dimensions. Now, the volume of a any prism is the area of the cross section, in this case is pi r squared times the height. Now, if you know that one, you also know the volume of a cone. And if you think about it, if I had this cylinder around here, obviously it's smaller, right? So if I just try and do a dodgy drawing in here, the volume of this cone inside is going to be smaller. Now, how much smaller is it going to be? Well, it's actually a third, so I'll just tell you that. You may have guessed that, which is a great guess, but this is the formula you do need to know. It's a third. If you think about spheres as well, that's four thirds in the volume. So often the volume has a third and it's often three-dimensional, so it's quite easy to remember. Now, so that's the formula. So we have the height, it's the perpendicular height, like when you measure yourself. Your radius, we're pretty au fait with that now. And this is what we had before when we did the surface area. This is the slanted length. Um, we normally call that an L. Okay, so all we need to find the volume is the radius and the height, and bish bash bosh. So here's a question ah, but we don't have the height. But what we do have here is a right angled triangle. Now, I know that because when I draw a perpendicular, of height. I'm just going to put the right angle this side so I don't just cross out the uh, 6 there. What I've got is a base of 6, a slanted height or slanted length of 10. But I need to know the height. Well, Pythagoras' theorem should be screaming at you now. now if you, and maybe even a Pythagorean triple. So the height is actually 8. So let's write the formula. Volume is 1 third pi r squared h if you don't know your triples, obviously 10 squared, 100, take away 36, 6 squared is 64, square root of 64 is 8, Pythagoras' theorem. So it's 1 third times pi times the radius squared, 6 squared, 36, times the height, which is 8. Now, 1 third of 36 is 12, 12 eighths are 96, so this is 96 pi centimeters cubed. And we may ask you to round to, I don't know, three sig figs or four decimal places, whatever they feel like. So let's have a look at this one. This one's in reverse. Actually, before I move on, i just point out, so that was one of the worst case scenarios because you actually have to work out the height. Quite often they'll give you the height and the radius, you have to bung it in. At least with this one, you had to work out the height. Better question. These are a little bit harder because they're in reverse. So sometimes we're gonna give you the volume and I've got two of these. One, we're gonna find the height and the other we're just going to find the radius, exactly the same to be honest. So let's just write down what we have and that's where too many students go wrong, they just don't start writing things down. So you write the formula and say, right, what can I put in? Well I can put this thousand in here, right? So that's a thousand and obviously a third is a third, pi is also a number, so pi. We've got the radius, six, so six squared is 36 and we don't know what height is, so I'm just going to call that x. Now, it's really up to you what you do here, but what I'm going to do is times by 3 first to get rid of the third. So I'm going to say 3,000 is equal to 36 pi times by x. So x, to get x on its own, which is the height, I'm going to divide by 36 pi. Now, those numbers aren't friendly. So that is it in terms of pi. So let's just type that in. What do we get? And I'm going to round this one to three significant figures. That's 26.5 to three significant figures. And the units are in centimeters because our volume is in centimeters cubed. That's another way they could make it harder. So the, uh, the lengths, they could be centimeters and meters, for example. That would make it a problem a little bit harder. Okay, and Another one, but 
Often when people are given the volume in terms of pi, they think, well, this is way harder. It's actually easier. That's what I want every single time. So let's write the formula. One third pi r squared h. Our volume, 80 pi. We've got a third times pi times x, which is our radius. You could leave it as an r, but I don't like to do that. Um, times the height, which is 12. Okay. Right, so... The reason I love it when it's in terms of pi, I can divide both sides by pi and they'll go. And normally it, the numbers are much easier. So I could do a third, I could times by 3 for example and get 240. Or I could do a third of 12 which is also 4, which I'm going to do. If I can make the numbers smaller, I'm always going to take the option. So I've got 4x squared. Okay, so 1 third times 12 is 4. 4 times x squared, 4x squared. So x squared is going to be 20 if we divide by 4 to both sides. And now we have the square root. So the square root of 20 is also root 4, root 5, using our third knowledge. And root 4 is 2, right? So that is 2 root 5s. That is an exact answer. That's the best answer you're going to get. And again, if they ask you to do it in decimal places, you can just hit the SD button and round. Okay, so basically, write the formula plug in everything you have and just rearrange to work out the thing you don't have. That's it. Best of luck.